Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever theory video I'm making on Tarsius Studios' new game, Reanimal. Unlike my last video, I won't be comparing this game to Little Nightmares. As for a start, the company probably doesn't want to be tethered to that franchise forever, as they've stated on their Twitter posts and they also seem very supportive of Little Nightmares 3. I knew all of this before making my last video, but the whole reason I made that last video about Reanimal being a sequel was to get down my own thoughts, and why I felt more excited for this game more than Little Nightmares 3. How little did I know how hard some people would take even theorizing about them being connected. God forbid we compare the two, or theorize about the original creators maybe making what they had always wanted to, now that they're no longer under the supervision of Bandai Namco. The important part of this is similar. It's not connected. Please, if there is anything, just stop saying connected. Stop doing the whole, it's Little Nightmares 4, or it's like, oh, it's a Little Nightmares we never got. Stop. You're not impressing anyone. We can, it's, it's a very small, narrow-minded view. But that's a video for another time. With that out of the way, let's get stuck into Reanimal. The title alone is pretty important. Just like Little Nightmares' original title was Hunger, Reanimal is important to the entire story, being a mix of the words reanimate and animal, as in bringing animals back from the dead. And would you believe the first shot we see is of a little lamb slowly coming back to life? Oh, and of course letting us know that these guys are the creators of Little Nightmares 1 and 2. So God forbid we compare the two! As with any movie, trailer, or game, the first shot we see is very important. It establishes the scene and the mood and lets us know what kind of ride we're in for. But we'll put a pin in this and come back to it later. As first, let's talk about the story. The description on their Steam page is vague about the details, which I love. But from there, we find out that this will be a co-op horror adventure game, which has you play as a brother and sister. They are on a mission to rescue their missing friends. They also mention about hope and redemption. Obviously, this hints towards the story, that which of right now we don't know much about. Did they leave their friends behind on the island as they escaped? And helping to free them is them getting their redemption. We'll have to wait until more information comes to light. We see a few different environments in the game. The shoreline, the bowels of a city, Main Street, and of course the ocean. So far it looks like we'll be sailing around one or possibly more islands, rescuing our friends trapped there. So let's talk about the gameplay. I do want to just briefly talk about this whole co-op feature. I don't inherently think that there is anything wrong with that, but I do believe it will affect the story and gameplay. For example, in Little Nightmares 2, there are parts where Mono is by themselves. You can't really get as scared as you can when you've got a friend with you. And it also makes me question why Little Nightmares 2 didn't have that to begin with. I think the main reason they didn't implement co-op in that game is for the simple fact it just couldn't work. And I'll tell you why. Imagine playing through the whole game with your friend, maybe making mistakes, maybe trolling you by making you die, dropping things on you, you get it, all of that. And you get to the very end of the game and you see this end cutscene. Is she gonna save me? <gasps> Come on. Come on. That reaction? Yeah, you wouldn't get that reaction. You know what you get? You'd get this. Why did you do that? I, what do you mean? I didn't do anything. I just saw you drop me. I am literally not touching my keyboard right now. Oh, you mean that's part of the game? Well, I, I guess so, maybe. Oh. The whole scene would just lose all of its gravitas instantly. Obviously, this is something that I think Tarsier Studios have taken on board and probably the reason why Little Nightmares 2 was never a co-op game. It's something that I hope they've taken into account when crafting the story, but we'll have to wait until we can get our grubby little hands on it. Ah yes, let's talk about the boat. This was mentioned on the Steam page as part of the gameplay of Reanimal. It looks to me like this scene right here is the first time we see and use the boat in game and probably how we start our adventure. The next time we see the boat, we have multiple rescued children in it. 
and the only other time we see the boat is when we are attacking things in the ocean. Also, it's important to note that we have a motor on the back of the boat at this point in the game. So it looks like not only are we going to be saving other friends and children, but possibly upgrading our boat or switching between boats. If I was to guess, I would say that this is the first boat, the boat we see at the start and with all the children in it. And as we progress through the game and we get to the final boss, we traverse the seas in the boat with the spears and the motor. So let's talk about those characters. As for single player, we don't know which one we'll be playing as. Does that have any bearing on any of the characters? Is one going to be more important than the other? We see something happen to the sister in the game, so right now she seems to have more importance to the story at least. As for the other children, we don't really know how many and who they are, apart from them being recognizable by their fancy headwear. The sister wears a cute kawaii bunny mask. <laughs> and the brother has a sack on his head. As for the other kids, we have a cone head, a bucket head, and one with what looks to be a crown of thorns. Jesus. And in the scene where the sister's character is being reanimated, we only see those same children. So it might be possible that there's only three friends to rescue. So what are we rescuing them from? <laughs> Let's talk about the enemies. Oh yes, let's get into my favorite part about these games, and that's the bad guys. The first enemy we encounter is the patron, or at least that's what I'm gonna call him anyway, dragging what appears to be a dead body into the cinema. It's possible that this scene comes slightly after this scene, where we see the same character jump on the table and charge towards something or someone. Maybe these two characters had a fight to the death, and we got caught in the middle. <laughs> Or is it possible that after their friend died, they still carry them wherever they go? A sadder take, but also possible. The next one we see is the pig character. The pig was also included in a very sneaky teaser to the game where it actually spoke. They're coming. Was this just to amp up the creepy factor just for the promo, or will the character speak in the game? It's too early to tell. Next up is the creepy cyclist who chases our siblings. What's interesting about them is that their head has been completely twisted upside down. It looks like it isn't just the animals that are being reanimated. Are they able to interact with other objects and vehicles? And if so, well, that's just downright creepy. Then we see the floppy bodies in the storage room. Lacking bones and more importantly, clothes. They seem to be living in the suitcases or have been stored there for one reason or another. In a previous shot, we've seen there will be some kind of pipes. So I'd imagine that these types of enemies might be able to fit into those tight spaces and give you a good scare. And finally, the one I've been saving for last. You might have noticed I didn't mention the lamb at the start, the sheep that climbs the houses, the headless mass of fur that seems to be stalking you, and the skull creature in the water. Now that's because I think they might be the same thing. Now, we've had our big bads in previous entries, like the lady in Little Nightmares, or the thin man in Little Nightmares 2. But I think the lamb we see at the very beginning is the same creature that's seen throughout the rest of the trailer. The lamb appears to be dead in the first shot. It's possible it fell down the well, or was it pushed down the well? And then we see it start to reanimate. So is it possible that this lamb comes back to life and starts to grow exponentially, possibly adding other mass to its being? As you can see here, there's a bunch of different humanoid creatures hanging to the back of it. They could be attacking it or being part of it. We really have no idea. So maybe inside its fur, it has other beings living inside it. Is this the curse of the reanimation? It craves other living beings. And then we have the fully covered in fur version. And again, this one's so much bigger, but the fur and limbs seem to be exactly the same as the sheep who climbs the houses. Another clue that these two are linked is that they have the exact same pointy ears, showing that somewhere underneath all that fur is the same head and the same animal. And finally, we see a version with a skull. If you look really closely, you can see the similarities this skull has to a sheep skull. Notice the gap between the front teeth and the back teeth. 
And another interesting tidbit of information here, if you look at the bottom of this screen, you can see what appears to be something going into that animal. And if I'm not mistaken, this silhouette looks very similar to the shape of the engine on the boat. Well, let me just take the boat and then like sort of scale it to the right size. Wait yeah, this thing's ginormous. Another possible hint to its size getting even bigger, as well as just, I don't know, tying loads of explosives to the boat and just sending it straight towards it. <laughs> but just in case you aren't happy with that theory, it's possible that every child has a sheep or lamb creature guarding them, one for each child. The lamb for the bucket, the climbing sheep for the cone, the headless sheep for... Jesus. And is it possible that we have one secret child we haven't seen yet? for that titanic-sized water sheep. So when the pig says, They're coming. Was he talking about their brother and sister coming to free their friends? Again, speculating with these games is just too much fun. So, that about wraps up this video. If you yourself have your own theories about the story, characters, or setting, leave them in the comments below and let's crack this one together. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.